Thank you, God. Glory to you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you, God. We bless you. For many of you don't know that we, uh, right before the word of God, we we come we come right out of worship. Uh, and it takes a moment uh, to gather yourself after the presence of God and feel upon you and feel in you in the atmosphere. We've got a a move of God, Thank you, experience with God. Thank you, His presence is, is here, Thank you, Jesus. and we are grateful you, for that. Very, very grateful for that. Because He didn't have to visit. He don't have to come here at all. But He's dependable. Like the song says, every Sunday, every Wednesday, he meet us here. And just every time we lift up our hands, every time we worship God, every time we give God the glory, he just come like a mighty rushing wind in here. And in most cases, there's not a dry eye in here afterwards. So as best as I can, <clears throat> let me just welcome you to God's Way of Faith International Ministry. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I want you to grab your Bible uh, and your notebooks. Uh, and for a minute here, I want you, I want you to take the time to find this because many of us don't go to the scripture. But I want you to find the Baca 2. Habakkuk 2 and 1. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And while you're turning, we're going to be praying. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne. Yes, and we come lifting you up. We come giving you the glory and the honor and all the praise. Yes, we exalt you. We magnify you. We thank you for just being God. Amazing, wonderful, beautiful as you are. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for being dependable. We thank you, O oh God, for being someone that we can rely on. If nobody else is around, God, we have you. If everyone walk away from us, oh God, you have, we have you. If everyone turn on us, oh God, we have you. You're dependable. Father God, we ask that as we go forth in your word, that you'll touch the lives of each and every person under the sound of my voice, that your anointing will flow in this place, heal set free, deliver, encourage, establish. Whatever it is that your word is sent to do, may it be done, but let it not return to you, Lord. Father, I pray as I decrease, you increase. Have your way. Bless your people. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. We're in Habakkuk 2. And it says, <clears throat> I will stand at my guard and station myself on the tower. And I will keep watch to see what he would say unto me. In what answer I will give as a spokesman when I am reproved. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and engrave it plainly on clay tablets so that the one who reads it will run. For the vision is yet for the appointed time. It hurries towards the goal. 
it will not fail, even though it delays. Wait patiently for it, because it will certainly come. It will not delay. There was a lot of bad things going on around that day. The Lord and the Habakkuk had that conversation. Like many of us, Habakkuk was looking for answers. And I found that we too have seasons where we are looking for answers from the Lord. There's times when all we can see is chaos all around us. And if we'll be honest, some of these trials and tests and tribulations are so heavy that we can get lost. We lose ourselves in the process of it all. But what if I told you today that losing yourself is part of the plan? That to lose ourselves is the only true way to find oneself. That's true. My subject to matter to my subject matter today is the power of having a vision. The power of having a vision. What is a vision? <coughs> vision is the word. Well, the word vision in the Bible is more often used as an encounter with God. Pretty much what some of us experience at the moment. It's where God imparts special revelation to us. Often this comes in a thought or in a dream or a simple vision, right? Now, we have to hear, we, now we, when we hear the word encounter with God, our minds try to think how that would be based on somebody else's encounter or what somebody else experienced or what something we heard. Mm -hmm. But it is different for everybody. Mm -hmm. See, Jacob, he wrestled with God and that was an experience where he had. John had a vision on the island of Patmos where he had a vision from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own encounter with the Lord. So I want to take a second and tell you about mine. I remember I was asleep one night and I felt my soul being pulled from my body. And I started to ascend up towards the ceiling of my room and then through the ceiling and, and as I was going I thought I was going to crash but I went through the ceiling and then I went through the roof and then through the sky and then I was upon the top of the earth looking down at it it was dark all around me <clears throat> but the earth was real bright and blue then I saw a man in a white garment. I couldn't see his face, but he pointed towards the earth. And I stood just hovering over the earth, me and this man. He pointed towards the earth, and I heard a voice from inside of me. And it said to me, travel this world, preach, teach, and prophesy to all. Then my body just jumped and I was back in my bed and I woke up. My, I felt warm, tingly, and I knew down on the inside, I was just with God. I'm saying this to let you know that there's an encounter coming if you have not already experienced it. And the encounter mm -hmm. God has for for you is going to be tailored to you. And this is God coming to you to speak to you about what he wants to do next in your world. 
of what he has for you to do. I want us to understand how powerful and how great this is. Now, this happened to me years and years and years ago. I can't even remember how long ago. It was maybe, I don't know, 15, maybe 20 years ago, a long time ago. But I'll never forget it. And that's one of the great things about encountering the Lord. You will never forget it. Mm -hmm. Go to Proverbs 29 and 18. I need you to understand that I had a vision. And when I when I finished encountering it, I got up and I began to write out what I've seen. And I began to write out what I experienced. And one of the things that is important for us as believers is to document moments with the Lord that you have. Don't take those things for granted. Don't take those moments with the Lord just as this just happening. You have to learn to document those things so that you can always go back to them and look them back up. Okay? It's always important. Proverbs 29 and 18 says this. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keep the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So for those that does not have a vision, also don't feel they has a, or have a purpose. Your vision, the vision that you have from the Lord is tied with the purpose that God has for you. And everything about you is going to help you. And everything, I mean, I'm sorry, everything that God is preparing and pushing into your life is all part of the vision and all part of the purpose that God has already established for you. So whatever it is that God is telling you to do today is part of a vision that, you, that God has for your life and want you to accomplish and want you to do. It may seem weird. All of a sudden, you get a desire to lose weight. All of a sudden, you get a desire to stop smoking. All of a sudden, you get a desire to do this or to do that. All of these desires comes from the Lord, who makes you, who's trying to make you better and fit to do what it is he created you to do. See, these desires are not always our own. And what happens a lot of times, we think that the desire belongs to us. That, oh, this is something that I want, but it's not. See, God got you on that path for a reason. Because he knows that somewhere down the line that the enemy is going to attack your health. That's why you got to lose weight today. He already knew that the enemy was chose, choosing to hurt you and cause you to have trouble with your lungs. So that's why he's telling you to not smoke. He already knew that you were going to have, he already know that you're going to have issues with something. So he combated today by getting you prepared for today for tomorrow. Mm. So a lot of times these desires that comes in our lives, the enemy steps in and fight us on the desire so that you would never feel fit. So even when you do arrive, you don't feel ready. Does that make sense to anybody? Mm. And a lot of times we go sick or we go unprepared and we struggle at the very thing that God wants us to do because we didn't write the vision. Mm -hmm. The vision, when you write it and you make it plain, God told Habakkuk to put it on tape, tablets. Okay, back then that's what they had. They didn't have paper and stuff like we do. We have to put ours on paper. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that's important, because he wants us to keep it before us. Mm -hmm. So every time you go through something, every time you deal with something, you can look back to the vision and remember why you are where you are. Mm -hmm. See, the spirit of hopelessness comes up to make you feel like there is no reason for you to keep going. Mm -hmm. The spirit of hopelessness come up and make you feel like there is no future from here. But the vision that you've written will show you that there is a reason to keep holding on. 
There's a reason to keep going in this direction. There's a reason to keep moving if I know the goal. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. So let's look at this in a different <clears throat> definition. It says in 29 and 18, where there is no vision of people perish, right? But he that keepeth the law happy is he. Mm -hmm. In another translation, it says, where there is no revelation, people cast off restraints. But blessed is the one who heed wisdom and instructions. Mm -hmm. Here's what I found out. That some of the things that we face is because we skip writing the vision. When you don't write the vision down, it leaves room for doubt, anger, and our enemy. <clears throat> it leaves room that our enemy can come in. The reason why God told her back to do this is because he knew that if you don't, you're going to be so consumed by what you see and not be consumed by what I said. Mm -hmm. And we have to learn what God say is greater than what we see. Mm -hmm. And we get stuck at what we see instead of trusting God for mm -hmm. what he said. Mm -hmm. See, if God says you are who he said you are, then you are who he said you are. It doesn't matter what you see. What matters is what he said. This is why we have to write it down because sometimes what he said doesn't look like what we see, mm -hmm. if you be honest with us. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't believe how many times that God asked me to do something mm -hmm. that I couldn't see. Mm -hmm. I couldn't figure out how in the world this was going to come together. And I tried my logic to figure it out, but my logic couldn't even figure it out. Mm -hmm. My mind couldn't comprehend on what he said. Mm -hmm. But I written it down anyway. And years later, I go back to what I've written down just to find out it came to pass, just like he said it would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, God is God wants us to learn to write it down so that we can always remember what it is that he has said. The enemy tries to cause us to forget. And he's trying to cause you to feel as if that were never going to happen in your life. This is never going to take place by showing you something else instead of what God said. We got to become <clears throat> stronger at it. Mm -hmm. Just like Habakkuk found trouble on every side and he sought the Lord, God answered him and told him to write the vision. Right? Go to 1 Timothy 1 and 18. Notice that Habakkuk in this situation he did what many of us won't do. He sought God. Mm -hmm. The Bible says to seek God so that you will find him. The issue is, is that some of us don't want to seek God and wonder why we can't get the answer mm -hmm. or the vision to write about that situation. See, whatever situation, that when, when, when I'm talking about vision, we thinking that it's a, a, a global thing. But what I'm trying to show you is that whatever God say to you about a situation is the vision. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a, about an outfit, whether it's about a husband or a wife, mm -hmm. whether it's about a man or a woman, whether it's about a car or a house, whether it's about a job or a child, mm -hmm. whatever God say to you, you have to write it because the enemy will tell you different. Right. Mm -hmm. I knew a young lady, and well, a young couple rather, and this young couple came to me and they began to tell me that they they they, they want a baby. And they've been they've been trying to get a baby. And I remember praying with them and we all prayed. And in the vision, I saw this little baby. And this baby was just as pretty. And I told them, I said, Well, this baby is you going you guys are gonna have a baby and it's going to look like the mama. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have the same eyes the mama has. And they heard that and it was excited and they went on. Then they called me probably a couple months later and they said, Bishop, we got some bad news. I said, what's the bad news? They said, the doctor said that we can't have children. There's something wrong with the husband, mm -hmm. that we can't have children. So we was hoping that we should go down, that we were hoping that God would allow us to go down to adoption agency and find a child that has eyes like mine. Mm. 
Now, how silly does that sound? Mm -hmm. And I told her, I said, well, I remember what God said about you. God said that you would have a child. He never said that you would have to adopt a child. He said you would have a child. He said, well, Bishop, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but God, I mean, but the doctor said that we can. I said, well, in whom report you going to believe? <laughs> Are you going to believe what the doctors say or are you going to believe what God said? So time went on. Later on, I lost contact. Haven't heard from them. Years later, I see them on Facebook. I reach out, hey, how you doing? Just wanted to say hi. Just wanted to see how y'all going. Bishop, we lost your information. We lost your car. At, um, about six months later, after that conversation, we went to the adoption agency. The baby, I didn't see any baby with eyes like my own. And I went to the adoption agency. But guess what? After we couldn't find no kid with eyes of my own, I found out I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And I was a couple, three months in. Didn't even know I was already pregnant. <clears throat> and I said, well, praise God. I said, I said, well, did he already have the baby? Because this is this has been time past. He said, yeah, we already had the baby, and the baby is beautiful and whatever. And I said, let me see a picture of the baby. They saw a picture of the baby. I said, now put the picture next to this. I said, put the picture next to you. She said, I remember you said you're going to have eyes just like that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't tell you that. God told me that. <laughs> Write the vision. Mm -hmm. If they would have written it, they would have had something to remind them when the devil told them something different. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not calling the, the, the doctor the devil. They do what they do, okay? But I want to let you know that when God says something, it overrides what anybody else says. Because God's got the authority to put something there that shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. God has the right to make something happen when somebody else don't want it to happen. Does that make sense to anybody? Mm -hmm. So whatever God says is so. Okay? First Timothy 1 and 8. 18. It says, Timothy, my son, I am giving you this commandment in keeping with a prophecy, one made about you, so that by recalling them, you might fight the battle well, holding on to the faith and good conscience, which some have rejected and so have suffered shipwreck with regards to their faith. See, to have a vision to give you life. And if you don't have vision, if you don't have the word of God in your life, you end up shipwrecking in your faith. Because when you believe in God, there's an up and down effect that takes place. Let me help you out on this. When God says something, it seems like everything opposite begins to happen towards what he said. Because there's a challenge now that comes to the faith. See, before the 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 the, the, the uh, Adam and Eve, before they ate of the tree, before even was an issue, as soon as they as soon as the tree issue came up, that's when the issue, that's when things started to go wrong. That's when the desire started to come there. Mm. If God never spoke on this tree, told them they never they had it, they can't eat from it. They never would have. They never would have the desire to. Hmm. Wouldn't even bother. They would look at it as any other tree. So when God points out something, what I'm trying to show you is that that's is where the enemy attack. Hmm. See, if God tells you that He wants to bless you in your appearance, then the enemy come and attack you in your appearance, hmm. just to see which one you're going to believe. Then you have to fight the good fight. You got to continue to say, I trust God and fight and hold on to what it is that God told me, regardless of what I see. Mm -hmm. This is why it's important to write it down so that you can always go back to it and say, wait a minute, what I see does not line up with what God said. Now I fight the good fight of faith because my, the fight of faith is I'm believing what God say over what the enemy is doing. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. The enemy starts to show you all types of craziness before. Mm -hmm. Before, I, when I first got into ministry, 
God said, I'm going to give you a church, and I want you to, I want you to minister to this church, and I want, I want you to do this and do this and build this church. The church problem. Everybody walked away. Nobody was at the church. And I'm like, wait a minute. I had another pastor coming down to the church, and he was coming down, and he was saying all these negative things to me. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? How is this possible, God? I'm doing what you told me to do. I didn't recognize that I didn't write the vision. So guess what happened? I kind of backed away from it because I thought that maybe, God, you changed your mind. Can I help you on something? God never changed his mind. He, whatever he said, it is always so. The problem is we change our mind and we start to think that maybe God changed his mind because we changed ours. And God does not change his mind. Mm -hmm. Whatever God said is so. Mm -hmm. We have to either stand or fold to it. Mm -hmm. The enemy try to get you to fold to it. God try to get you to stand to it. The truth is, is which one are you going to believe? The report is before you. I've already told you what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. The question is, could you stand and fight about what you're going to do? So the enemy started to attack. The, the very thing that can cause you to operate in what God created you to operate. Mm -hmm. So if, 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 if it's something that you need money on, the enemy will start attacking your finances. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, you never have enough money. It's like, I just don't have enough money to fulfill what it is you called me to do, Lord. Just for you to stop fighting. Just for you to stop believing. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose of the enemy. The enemy trying to get you not to fulfill the vision, by causing attack in the area that God said he's going to bless you in. So if God said he's going to give you a husband that your fiance start acting a fool. God said he's going to save your house. Everybody in the house go crazy. God said he's going to bless you, uh, help you in your, in your weight. All of a sudden, ice cream is the best tasting thing that you can ever have. <laughs> Whatever God tells you he's going to do, the enemy comes to attack in that area. This is why we have to write it down. Mm -hmm. To remind ourselves of what it was that God said to me concerning this matter. That's right. In many cases, whatever you ask God, he already answered you. And he'll give you the answer. What happens is, unfortunately, we get a little older and we start to forget things. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm gonna be, I, I'll be the first one to tell you, I forget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I tell myself, I forget. And then I go to God after going through all this fighting and struggling, acting a fool, getting mad at the enemy, getting mad at God, getting mad at all of these issues, getting mad at myself, usher, kicking the boxes, acting up, and then go to God and say, God, I don't want to say, what's going on? He said, he go back and tell me the same thing he told me three months ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like, God, wait a minute, you didn't change, he's not going to change anything. Mm -hmm. It is the same thing I said before. Right. Now, you need to hear it again, Bishop, I tell you every day, you need to hear it. But you need to write it down so that you can remember it so when the attack comes, you won't let it go. Right. Mm. Come on, right. So you won't become shipwrecked regarding your faith. Mm -hmm. Having a vision gives you life. It gives you motivation to keep going forward. It helps keep pushing you towards the goal. Mm -hmm. Go to Matthew 16 and 24. I have to go beyond what I originally think because the enemy gets also get in our mind and start to play with our mind concerning the thing that God has given us. Mm -hmm. And what he started to do is start to get you to think differently because as you think differently, then you believe in that report over God's report. Mm. So you got to watch your own mind. You got to keep your mind, your head covered. Mm -hmm. Because the enemy attack us in areas sometimes where we don't even know it. Mm -hmm. He'll tell you that, oh, sister, don't go get that new dress. You're too big. Mm -hmm. But God told you he wants you to look good. Mm -hmm. right. He'll tell you that, oh, brother, I don't want you to talk to this particular woman because that type of woman right, right there is going to drive you crazy. But God already showed you that was the woman. Mm -hmm. See, the enemy will continue to tell you all types of lies just to throw you off. Mm. Because he don't want you to fulfill what God has for your life. Mm -hmm. In order for us to flow in the things of God, 
In order for you to be who God needs you to be, you have to go back to my original point of losing you. Because see, you are the problem. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we don't realize that we are the problem. It's the way we think, the way we was raised, how we feel, how we what we what we think it ought to be, how we think it ought to go. And a lot of times it's self. Mm -hmm. Self gets in the way. That's right. This is the reason why when God takes us to trial and tests us, you can't find yourself. And the reason why you can't find yourself because God is trying to kill your old self. Mm -hmm. Because in order for you to become new, you have to get rid of the old. Yes, sir. The problem with a lot of us is that we want to drag the old in with the new. Yeah. And you cannot drag the old in with the new because you will always be uncomfortable in new wineskins trying to be old. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense to anybody? Mm -hmm. So whatever God trying to do, it's, it's like this. If you, let's, let's, let's do it in a weight situation. You got new weight. Let's say you're not, you're now 50, 20, 30 pounds lighter than what you want to be. Go back and try to put on the old garment when you were 30, 40 pounds bigger and see how it doesn't even fit. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even look right on you. And the reason why is because you are now a new person. Mm -hmm. See, the more you become new, the old stuff has to fade away. Mm -hmm. The old God is trying to get rid of the old so that you can become a new. Mm -hmm. You didn't lose your life. You're not going through what you're going through just to go through it. You're going through it so that you can become what he needs you to become. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says in uh, uh, Matthew 16, 24, Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Here we go. For whosoever, here we go, will save his life shall lose it. And he, whoever will lose his life for my sake, will find it. Mm -hmm. Those that's trying to hold on to the old life. The Bible just said to you that you should lose it. Those that's trying to grab hold to the to hold on to what they know and what they used to and what how they feel and what they've been. That is the old. Right. But God says for you to have new life in me, you're gonna have to let go of the old mm -hmm. so that you can experience all of the new. Let me help you about let me let you know something about the old life. The old life stopped you from enjoying the new. You cannot enjoy the new life because the old life, he's sucking you back into where you used to be. And God don't want you there. God wants you to become new. He wants you to enjoy the newness that he's bringing in your life. And how do I enjoy that newness? I enjoy that newness by getting rid of the old. Mm -hmm. It says... If you're looking for life, this is the funny part about it. Many of us don't understand why we keep losing ourselves. We're losing ourselves so that you can find yourself. That's for somebody. Mm -hmm. You keep losing yourself so that you can find yourself. Mm -hmm. He's telling you, 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 the reason why you keep getting lost mm -hmm. is because the person you're trying to be is not who he wants you to be. So he's trying to kill who you were so that you can be who you are. He's trying to take you to another place. The problem is, is that you're trying to take the old mindset, I mean, the new mindset and the new, I mean, the old mindset into the new area and the new way of doing things, and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You ever wonder why it's so difficult? You want to know why you get into the new and then fall back into the back, back to the old? It's because you can't handle the new. And the only reason why that's happening is because you keep bringing in the old with you. Mm -hmm. You have to drop it all. Mm -hmm. You gotta lay it all down. Mm -hmm. Get rid of it all. And let God renew. And let God change you over. The Bible says, for what it, it what is it that I mean what for what is a man who profit the whole world and loses his soul? Or what should a man give in exchange for his soul? But God is trying to show us that the old is not going to help you save your soul. Mm -hmm. It's who he created you to be. It's the one that he desired to be in heaven with him. It's not who you used to be. Who we used to be, is, it should be a shame. We should be ashamed of that. Mm -hmm. I'm ashamed of the man that I used to be. 
I do not like the man that I used to be. And I don't even like when God take me back to give you revelation of who I used to be. I don't even like telling y'all the stories. But I know I have to tell it to you so that you can understand what God is doing in your life. You should be so upset about who you used to be because you recognize so much new in you. The more of the new that you find, the more of the old you don't like. You start to recognize that your old ways stink. Mm -hmm. You start to recognize that your old ways is just not the right way of doing things. Mm -hmm. I did what I thought I could at that time, but now I'm doing what God needs me to do in this time. That makes sense to anybody. Mm -hmm. Go to John 10 and 9. So by writing, so so by letting go of this life, mm -hmm. I can have the life that God desired for me to have. And I recognize that this is the life that I really desire to have. It's the, it's the funny thing about it. When you desire to do something different in life or have a better life, we get frustrated because what God do is honor your prayer and start destroying the old. Because in order to get the new, you have to destroy the old. We don't. We want the new and the old all together, and it doesn't work that way. God knows in order for you to have a new husband, a new wife, a new job, a new the old one got to go away. The old issues got to go away. Now I'm not saying that He's gonna take away your husband or take away your wife, but I'm saying is in order for that individual to change and to be who God wants them to be. The old them got to die. Just like the old you got to die. But guess what happens, saints? When you start dying, seem like everything else around you start to die too. <laughs> because they can't not respond to you the same like they used to. They can't get the old from you because you're not the old anymore. They can only experience the new. Mm -hmm. See, when people come knocking on the door looking for the old, mm -hmm. you ought to open the door and let them see the new. This is not who I use. I know what you're looking for. I know who you're looking for. But they're not there any longer. Mm. See, I was the ride and die guy. I was the guy to come and get if you wanted somebody to get beat up, if you wanted somebody to get shot up, if you wanted somebody to get knocked down. Hey, that's the dude to go get. They already knew. Go knock on his door. That's the dude to go get. Because he's going to go in like a whirlwind and just destroy everything in their path. But it was strange. Because after I gave my life to the Lord and I began to start living the way God wanted me to live, when they came to knocking, they were getting the new man. The new man was saying, oh, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not going to do that. Wait a minute, well, you got weak? You a punk now? Excuse me? Oh, okay, you, 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 you're not a punk. But you know what I'm trying to say? You know, you, 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 you wait a minute, you're not going to ride? This is, your, this is your thing. We used to be the one that, oh, you would be the first one out the door. Not anymore. Hmm. What are you doing in there? What are you busy doing? What? Reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. Worshiping God. Worshiping God. You? Man, there must be a God if you change. But many of them gave their life to God because they saw a change in me. How many people are we holding up from getting their lives right because we won't change? See, when they see the new you, then it prompts them to become new. You didn't realize, but you were the leader. You were the one that they were following. See, I know it doesn't seem like it. You seem like the one that they keep dumping on. But what you didn't realize, you're the leader. And whatever you do, it's going to affect the whole household. The more you change, the more the household change. The more the whole life, everybody around you change. Mm -hmm. So people begin to change because people start to recognize that, you know what, that man, was, that man is serious about this God thing. He ain't fighting with us no more. He ain't going, he ain't showing up at the parties anymore. He not doing the things that he normally do anymore. Something has changed. And that curiosity, a lot of times, bring them right to Christ. Because they see something different in you. John 10 and 9. I am the door. If anyone enter by me, he will be saved. And will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes not only but to steal, kill, and destroy. 
I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. The word abundantly there means full. He came so that you can have a full life. More abundantly means he wants you to have a full, fulfilling life. Your life's supposed to be exciting and wonderful. People should want to be drawn to the wonderfulness of your life. They should be they should desire what you got because they cannot understand why you always smiling. Why are you always so happy? Why life is always seem to be flowing in, your, in the right direction for you? Well, this is why Jesus came. But in order for you to have that, this life that I'm speaking of, you've got to get rid of the old. Notice now, the old life, you're frowned. The old life, you're sad. The old life, you remember. I remember always being mad. I was always mad in my old life. I was mad at everything and everybody. Didn't matter who, what. I told you a story of me getting upset that the sun came up and I shot a bullet at the sun. I was just that upset in life. I felt that the day shouldn't have came in. Who am I? Crazy, right? But then I, re but as I gave, when I gave my life to the Lord, I began to enjoy the sun. <coughs> I enjoyed the new day. Because the joy of the Lord is new every day. And I, and I recognize that weeping may do it for the night, but joy come in the morning. So I started to understand and start to enjoy my days. I started to enjoy my life. I started to smile more. I started to play more. And people used to tell me, they said, man, you got such a great smile. I'd be like, I got to get my heart. It doesn't matter. It's something about your smile. You don't want to know why? Because they used to see that frown. It is to see that ugly face. It is to see that mean face. It is to see that face that will come and do ne negative things. But when you cross over and God give you a new life, then your smile becomes pleasant. Your life becomes pleasant. And you become pleasant to everybody around you. Does that make sense to anybody? Amen. Go to Ephesians 4 and 19. So I got to write down the answers, the visions of what God tells me. Because whatever God tells me, that is, gonna, that is the answer to my situation. And I got to remember these things. And there's many times I got to go back. I, got that, that I, I have a book now. You know, before I had it on, 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 uh, on in my emails, different things of that nature. But now I got to book back. Let me tell you something. You're going to have to go back a lot of times. And look back through that stuff. You wouldn't believe how more, how encouraged you would be if you would just go back to some of the things that God had already said to you. You would be amazed if you start to go back through. Yeah, read your Bible, yes, but also read your journal. Mm -hmm. Read the things that God has spoken to you. You will be amazed. Let me tell you, when I'm having a bad day, I just start pulling back up the things that God said to me. And if you pull back up those things that God has said to you, they're going to bless you. Now listen, if you haven't done it, start today. Start today. Just start to write down the things that God told you about certain things. And whenever life starts to get rough and get difficult and tests get too heavy and trials become hard, I dare you to go back into that book and start looking back at all of the wonderful things that God has said to you and about you. And it will blow your mind. And it will help you get through a lot of hard times. Mm. Ephesians 4.19 says this. They do not care anymore about what is right or wrong. They have turned themselves over to the sinful ways of the world and are always wanting to do every kind of sinful act that they can think of. But you did not, but you did not learn anything from Christ. If you have heard of him and have learned from him, put away the old person you used to be, having nothing to do with the old sinful life. It was sinful because of being fooled into following bad desires. Let your mind, your heart be made new, it says. You must become a new person, it says, and be God-like. Then you will be made right with God and have a truly holy life. This is how you have a wonderful life. So Y'all think they should make this stuff up? I'm going to make this stuff up. It's in the book. It's in the book that you won't read. In the book that you need to read. In the book that you need to get. It's important 
that we to have the life that we are desiring, we gotta let go the old. Mm -hmm. In the process, in my own life, every time God give me something new, you can ask anybody to know me, I get rid of the old. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for that because I don't want to be reminded of the old any longer. I don't want to be reminded. I tell I tell women that that or men that try to people that trying to get into a relationship. Listen, everything of that old relationship or that last person, get rid of it. Throw it all away. Whatever they got, whatever. Don't even go to the same places y'all used to go. You used to go with somebody else. Don't even do it. Why? Why is that important? Because did you want you want this thing to have a fresh start. You want this thing to have a true chance. You want to have a true opportunity, right? It's the same mindset that God has for you. I want you to have a true opportunity. I want you to have a true chance. I want you to have a true moment. So sometimes in that, that means some of the old friends that got got to go away. I have some friends that are very influential, and it will get me caught up in garbage. So I can't deal with them. I would say hello and hi, but that's about all I can go. I can't. I can't go when they say let's go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Because I already know what they're going to do. And they're very influential. And I don't want to fall into what they're into because I'm in a new life. And I need them to keep seeing me in that new light. Because the more they see me in that new light, eventually they're going to start to come my way. And eventually they're going to want to start to do the things that I am doing with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's going to help them change their life. But if you keep bowing down and doing what they want to do, and you keep going that route, then it's going to remind you of your old life. And it's going to take you back into it. And before you know it, you're still do, you're doing things that you've been trying to get out of. Right. And you're not going to be able to enjoy it. Because let me tell you what I found out. When you, try to, when you are new and you try to go back to the old, mm -hmm. when you used to have fun, you don't have fun with that no more. Mm -hmm. You don't enjoy any of that no more. You try to go back to it and be trying to go back to the same person. Yeah, I'm going to go back in here the same way I was. And you go back into it and all of a sudden you're like, this is, why was I even here in the first place? Because the new person don't accept the old no more. The new per the things that used to excite you doesn't excite you anymore when you become new. Right. God trying to do give you the fresh opportunity, a fresh moment with him. So that you can go away from all of the things that stop you and hinder you from being who he created you to be. Mm -hmm. So 25 says this. So stop lying to each other, it says. Tell the truth to your neighbors. We all belong to the same body. If you're angry, do not let your anger become sin. Get over your anger before the day, the day is finished. Now, let me have you on something. The Bible says, okay, I know you're going to be angry, but I, won't, I don't want you to sin. Now, Bishop get angry. But I always try to stop it before it goes into sin. Mm -hmm. We all going to get angry. There's something going to frustrate you, make you mad. It's, it's, it's going to happen. And God knows that. That's why he said, be angry. It's okay. Let it out. Because it's better to let it out than hold it in. Mm -hmm. Because if you hold it in, it hurts, it damages you on the inside. So go ahead. If you got to scream, go ahead and scream. I'm not saying scream at nobody. Okay? Mm -hmm. But I am saying if you got to put your face in the pillow, mm -hmm. then do one of those. Okay? If you gotta if you gotta walk and pace the floor, whatever you gotta do, whatever you gotta do to calm yourself down, do that. Go eat something, whatever it takes. Okay? Go play the game. Whatever you need to do. Just calm down. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. before it turns into sin. Okay, because I remember the old bishop. When I got angry, I tore everything in the house. Windows broke. The the, the, the and, 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 and fish bowls kicked over. Things were knocked over. I ripped the carpet off the floor. I was so upset. Okay, mm -hmm. just to turn around and we have to repay for all that because that's my stuff. It makes no sense, right? No. Like, okay, what I'm gonna do now? I got no TV. Okay, what I'm going to do now, my fish is all on the ground dead, you know, because I busted the on his thing. But none of that make any sense. But that anger, we have to learn to control. Mm -hmm. The new man controls the anger. Mm -hmm. The new man don't let people push their buttons that, that far. Mm -hmm. Don't let them, you ain't always living here. Mm -hmm. Okay? It says... Do not let the devil start working in you, or don't give place to the devil. Without a vision, it gives place to the devil. Without writing down what God had told you, it gives place to the devil. 
It gives the devil the right to come in and say to you whatever you want to say to you concerning what God said to you because you can't remember everything that God said to you. Let me ask, let you in on something. Stop relying on your own mind. Your mind could be your biggest enemy. Your mind, you will sit here and you will listen to everything that has been said, walk out that door, or go back in the, and go somewhere, go eat something, or go do something, and everything that was said would be forgotten. You're like, what in the world did we talk about in service Sunday? And the reason why is because you didn't write it down. It's, it's best to write it down. That's why we record it, because I want you to go back and listen to it again. Mm -hmm. Because I'm guaranteeing you, you'll forget every time I send this message out, these messages out to somebody, you know what they tell me? I've heard this message, but I don't remember hearing this and that and that and this. Because your mind causes you to forget. Mm -hmm. Your mind is on everything else. Mm -hmm. Your mind starts to wonder and begin to think about all types of different things. And before you know it, you're out. So always write down the things that God said. I got to a point where I, where I would jump out of the situation, and if I'm in front of somebody, I'll say, excuse me for a minute, so I can just write this down. I'll type it in my phone, whatever I got to do. I'll write it on a piece of paper. I'll put it on a chart, or whatever it is, because I want to I want to take it, and then I'll record it in my book, mm -hmm. or record it with where my rest of my stuff is at. And it's really important to do that, because if you don't do it again, you're giving place to the enemy. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to give no doors. You don't want to have no open doors around the enemy. Because the enemy is an opportunist. He is not going to see a door and not come through it. If he see that door open, he's coming in. And when he comes in, we know what he does. Steal, kill, and destroy. Many of us are destroyed and our lives are destroyed. Many of us get things taken from us. Things are going crazy in our lives simply because we got a door wide open. It says, 28, anyone who steals must stop it. He must work with his hands so he will have what he needs and can give to those who need help. We, we're not like the enemy. We're not, we're not going to be a thief. Having a vision motivates you to keep going. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose of having it. Reading that stuff, when I read those things, it motivates me to keep going. Like, wow, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, God, he did say that. Yep, 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 yep. Because these burdens come and they make you forget. They come and they make you feel like, oh my God, I, I, I just, I don't understand. There's just no hope here. But it's a lie. And you have to go to the truth when the lie is there. And sometimes, let me help you out, sometimes, I'm not, and, and take this the right way, I am not telling you not to read your Bible, okay? Hear me. Always read your Bible. But sometimes it's hard to find that answer going through that big Bible. But in your journal, if you just go through some of those things, it will answer and help you with that situation and motivate you enough. Then you can go and pick up your Bible. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes you need that motivation right then and there, and sometimes you don't know where to turn that in your Bible. I don't know, gee, do I go to Matthew? Do I go to Genesis? Do I go, where did I go? And you don't know where to go. But your journal, all of the things that God personally said to you, mm -hmm. you, can, you turn that and that motivates you out of that situation and then you can return back to your Bible. It's very important that you have something before you mm -hmm. that you can always look at. These are goals, plans, strategies, schemes, Things that God wants for you to do in your life. Mm -hmm. How do I handle when this person is yelling at me? What did God told you before? Mm -hmm. Because when you go back to God, he's going to tell you the same thing. Mm -hmm. You go back to God and say, okay, God, they're yelling again. I'm upset about the situation. What do you want me to do? And God said, what did I tell you last time? Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, yeah. But if you have it written down, you can always remember, oh, yeah, on this day, brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so yelled at me. And God told me to do this and do that. So that's what I do. Because mm -hmm. now I got, I got the answer. Does that make sense to anybody? Yeah. Mark 20, 10 and 28. It's really important. Let's stop being lazy. And Bishop saying that in love. Stop. Let's stop being lazy. It takes nothing to write something down. It takes like two seconds. Some of us can text so fast, we can text three or four paragraphs in two seconds. So guess what? If you can text that quick, then why don't you just text to yourself what God's saying about the situation? 
Put it somewhere where you can always pull it back up. Put it somewhere where you can always get it. What did God tell me? One of the things that 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 you want to know what stress pastors are and why past, a lot of pastors fall out of the pulpit and give up and quit and all this stuff. You want to know why they go through what they go through? Because the people don't remember. <laughs> And we spend times telling you the same thing over and over again. We just say it in a different way. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. I, 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 mm, I have people that call me sometimes and they say to me, well, what I supposed to do about this? And I said, well, did you listen to the last word? Because the last word is all over this. Oh, I didn't listen to the last word. Well, I mean, if you don't listen to it, if you're not hearing it, you're not going to know what to do. Mm -hmm. The instructions, a lot of times, of what we're looking for is in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important that we remind and we listen to it so that we can be reminded. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not discouraging anybody from calling me, but I'm trying to get you to understand sometimes it's hard when the bishop has to be before the Lord getting a new word for you. I got to go back to the old word that I already preached three weeks ago that you refused to listen to. This is why it's important to be able to pull back things up. Go back to it. Pull it up yourself. Eat of it. Learn for your own self so that you can keep going forward. Mark 10 and 28 says this. Peter began to say, we have given up everything to follow you, Lord. Jesus said, amen. I say unto you, there is no one who has given up house, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, children, land, for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, who would not receive a hundred times more. Now, wait a minute. Whoa, wait a minute. Because see, this is where the issue comes in. Mm -hmm. The enemy tells people that all, oh, not the enemy, a lot of times people think that all this stuff is going to happen when we get to heaven. Wait a minute. No, no, no. He said, listen to the word. He said, you will receive this stuff now, now, in eternal life in the age to come. So wait a minute, those two different things. Mm -hmm. So wait a minute, you're saying to me, Lord, that I there is nothing that I've given up. That's right. That I'm not going to receive back a hundred times better mm -hmm. in this life. And then when I get over to eternity, I even got even more stuff waiting on me. I want you to get this. God ain't telling you to let go things just to let them go. He wants you to let go things so that he can give you what you need. Mm -hmm. Many times we don't have what we need because we won't let go of things that we shouldn't have. There's somebody that keep calling me. Yeah, I'm not trying to put your blessing why I said somebody, okay, when you start. So there's someone that keep calling me and they ask me all the time about a husband. And I told them, well, I didn't tell him, but God told him through me that God want to bless you with a husband, but the one that you're with is not your husband. And they refuse to let this guy go. And they just keep teaming with this guy. But then they keep calling me saying, I don't understand why I can't get married. <laughs> it's because you won't let that one go. What are your husband supposed to do? Come and go on a date with you and him? Supposed to be what it's supposed to be a, a what they said three, what they said three is a what they call that what they said a three is a uh, it's I, it's a, it's a saying I can't think of it but it's it, what are you supposed to do just pop in three is a crowd you know, what are you supposed to do what are you supposed to do pop in and go out on a date and say well hey how you doing hey how you doing if you believe in God for a husband then you got to get rid of this guy that is not your husband if you believe in God for money then you're gonna have to learn to sow money. If you believe in God for, for a new wardrobe, then you got to get rid of the old one. You have to learn to let go mm -hmm. in order to receive. Right. Whatever God trying to do in your life, in most cases, it didn't happen because you refused to let go. Mm -hmm. So it's telling you that if you've given up houses and land, and some of us have, some of us had given up houses, we've given up land, we've given up families, we've given up this, we've given up that. We're giving up everything. It says, for the sake of the gospel. I know that I've done that for the sake of the gospel. I've given up a lot. But guess what? It is promised to me through God 
that everything that I had given up, everything I have sacrificed, everything that I missed out on, everything I didn't get a chance to be around, everything I didn't get a chance to be part of, all going to come back to me in this life a hundredfold. I don't, I don't give up things just to give it up. God just want to give you what, something better. Because what we had before is not that good. We think it's good. But God, God is a God of great replacements. He'll love to replace something old. I mean something, yeah, with something, something old with something new. Mm -hmm. The question is, are you willing to do it? Last scripture, Matthew 7 and 7. To walk in this, to flow in this, we have to understand. I got to get the instruction, as I told you in my testimony. Having not having the instruction, I was I was bumping against the wall. I was kicking against the prick. I was having a very hard time. I was having difficulties because I couldn't get that to work. I couldn't figure out why this. I can't get this young lady saved. I didn't understand. But once I got the instruction, I had to seek God. To get the instruction. What many of us refuse to do, we try to do it our way, and when it doesn't work, we try it again. And it doesn't work, we try it again. We keep getting to these closed doors and get mad and frustrated because the door won't open. Well, just let me help you out on something. Some of the some reason why the door is not open is because God won't allow them to open. He wants you to try another door. It doesn't mean for you to stop knocking, it's just simply for you to try another door. We keep knocking on the same door and get upset because that door won't open mm -hmm. and get mad. And we try all types of ways. We're knocking on it in the front, and then we turn around, knocking on it in the back, and we go and we kick it. We do all these different things trying to get that door to open. And God said, hey, dude, you can shoot the door. It's not going to open because I don't want it open. Try another door. Then we go to our, find the right door and click, click. Like, what in the world? You know, I didn't think I had to do that door over there because that wasn't the door. Always remember, we have to learn to seek God. Seeking God means we try to keep continuing in his face until we get the instruction, until I get the, 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 the information that I need. And then when you get it, write it down. Mm -hmm. Write the vision. Write what he says to you. Because then that, that's God's way of encountering you. Don't always have to show up in a glorious and God popped in a room and all of a sudden all the lights go out and all of a sudden you got this bright. Listen, it don't have to go that way. It can just simply be a word that God says to you. It can simply come in the thought. Remember what we read? It can become in the thought. It can come in the dream while you're sleeping. But once you got it, write it down. Write it down. This is the answer. This is how I do this. So when you get to, when you have to stand on stage and deal with it, you got it. Because I got the answer for it. It says, Matthew 7 and 7, Ask and it should be given to you. Seek and you should find it. Knock and it should be open to you. For everyone that asks, receive. And he that seeketh, finds. And to him that knock, it shall be open. For you that knock, it will open. Only if you knock it on the right door. The wrong door will not open. God will never open the wrong door for you. He won't do it now. It, will, it does get to a point sometimes where we kick, pull, knock, destroy, do everything that we do. There ain't no door left. Now you, now you can. You can just go right on there because, I mean, God did everything he can to keep you out that door, but you, it's like, okay, you wanted that bad, just go right ahead. Mm -hmm. You walk in there and realize that this is definitely not the door I should have went in. Mm -hmm. we, we got the same thing God I'm trying to keep you from when you get go. Because what looks good on the outside is not always good on the inside. Mm. I remember going to a hotel. And at this hotel, it was beautiful. I mean, one of the most beautiful hotels I've seen. It's like, God, this place is beautiful. I mean, it was very nice. I mean, I they gave me the key to my room, and I didn't even go to my room yet. I was just walking around the hotel. It was all pretty and everything. Like, look at this, man. This, down, down here in the vessel. Oh, they got all this. All this computer system, and they, they serve you food. They got a big glistening pool on the outside. I mean, this place is nice. And I was just walking around. I didn't even get to the room. 
I goes up, the, I get in the elevator, even the elevator nice, it smells good, you know, we got people in there with their bags and whatever on vacation or whatever, I'm like, wow, this is a very nice place. I got my key in my hand, I am anticipating, I'm excited. Look at the floor of the hallway and going down to my room on the floor of the hallway was all these pretty patterns on the rug. I'm like, this, 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 that's what I'm talking about. Walk down there and there's gold seemed like it was on the on the uh on the walls or whatever, pictures hanging. I'm like, this is beautiful. I can't wait to get in this room. Took the key, stuck it in the door. I can't wait. Open the door, goes inside of it, and it was messed up. The carpet was nasty. The bed was there were stains on the uh on the sheets. The balcony was 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 undone. Everything was bad about this place. It didn't even smell right. Mm. And I said, Lord, I said, wait a minute, this what? Because every time thing that looked good is not always good. Mm. So I called down to the front, I'm out of here. I called down to the front, listen, I'm out of here. This place is great, whatever, nothing. They say, you know what? You in the wrong room. Come back down, let me give you another key. I go back down and I get another key. I say, you know, okay. Now I get on the elevator, it's like, okay, and the elevator stink. I remember that. Now all of a sudden the elevator stink, right? I walk down the carpet, now the carpet doesn't look as pretty. The gold on the wall don't look right. The 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 the, the, uh, the pictures don't look good. And I'm down there like, man, look, I man, I'm about to go home. I don't care what Lincoln said, because Lincoln sent me. I don't care what Lincoln talked about, I ain't going in there. And I put the key in the door and I open the door, I walk in, and I said, whoa. <laughs> Now I was in the right door. Mm -hmm. See, when God sends you the right door to go through, then it will be a blessing to you. Mm -hmm. The wrong door will never appeal to who you are. Now, the old me would have just said, you know what, I'm here now, I'm just going to take this room and be done with it. The new me said, this is not me. Mm -hmm. The new me said, I can have better than this. Lincoln is putting all this money for me to come over here and get training. They can put me, I, I, I'm out of this hotel. I'm going to call Lincoln and Lincoln will put me in another hotel. But I didn't recognize that. But then that same hotel was this glorious room that I enjoyed all by myself. Come on. Father God, we just thank you. We give you glory and honor and praise. And Lord, we ask dear God that you help us to write the vision and that we make it plain. Lord, we ask dear God that we will always refer back to what you said about a situation. Mm -hmm. And that, God, we will never, ever go with our own thoughts, our own way of thinking. Help us, oh God, to remember to always walk it out the way you desire it to be walked out. Help us always, oh God, to look back over the things, dear God, that you have given us. Whatever you said about it, we receive it and we accept it. Now help us to write it. Yes, Lord. Father, I pray as we receive more and more encounters from you, that God, through the encountering, that even though we're excited about you there, even when we're excited about your presence, even when we're excited about your anointing, that we don't forget that when we go into your presence to take a pencil and a pen and a paper, something so that we can write. Yes, because God, there's not a time that I ever got in your presence and had something to say to you that you never had nothing to say back to me. Yes, if we would just stay there for a minute, we can hear what it is that you want to say. Yes, Lord. And may we write it down so that we won't forget. Yes, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Don't forget to like, subscribe to this message. Remember, down on the description is our information, church information, phone number. Give us a call. We want to pray for you. We want to keep you lifted up and encouraged. We want you, we want to help you with this. Um, to receive more content like this, hit the subscribe button and that'll help you to always hear our content. So every time something new come out, every time something, uh, every time we make a video, you will receive it. You will get a notification letting you know that our message is out, okay? We love you, we want you to know that God loves you. This message is so prophetic, I can't even, I don't know, I'm just, I'm, I'm jumping in my skin mm -hmm. because there is people, I feel it in the spirit. There are so many people that have not done this. There's so many people that have not even heard to do this. 
we took it, we take things lightly, we, we don't, we hear what people say, but a lot of times we don't, we don't think about ever writing it down. Somebody now is going to go out and buy them journals. I see people buying journals. I see people buying special pens and I see people making, doing this and making, doing this for real. Right. Go do it. Guess what? A pen from a dollar store is a dollar. Okay. You can get a journal from a dollar, from a dollar store. It's a dollar. You got two dollars. I'm sure you do. If you don't have two dollars, I will send you a journal. Okay. I will send you a pen because it's important that you write down everything that God said to you. And that will encourage you. The devil don't like what I just said to you because I just given you a tool and a key to overcome when he come against you. Now I'm just giving you something to, to better equip you to go through the next fight in your life. Amen? Amen. We'll see you in the next one. God bless you.